Hello and welcome all. I welcome you all at the 30th edition of the weekly webinar series on Kasdarin campaign presented by National Water Mission Minister of Jalshad, the Government of India and organized by APEC News Network. And like earlier 29 editions, today also we have representations from the various districts of the, the country. Uh, but before I introduce the uh, district administrators, let me first introduce to all of you the keynote speaker and the guide uh, a person who is guiding us for this campaign. I have with us Devushri Mukherjee, a senior IS officer, who is the additional secretary and mission director of National Water Mission, Mr. Dalshad, the government of India. We welcome Devushri Mukherjee. Thank you so much for joining us today, ma'am. We also have with us uh, Hari Chandana Desari, district collector of Narayan Pat from the state of Telangana. We welcome Hari Chandana Ji. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have with us Shweta Nagarkoti, assistant collector of Tiruvanthapuram from the state of Kerala. We welcome Shweta Ji. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I think we'll be joined by Ms. Soumya Pandey, who is the Chief Development Officer of Kanpur Dehat from the state of Uttar Pradesh. She'll be joining us shortly. So without taking much time, I'll request uh, Devushri Mukherjee to uh, share with us her thoughts on the motive behind organizing this uh, uh, webinar series and how Kazarin Campaign is actually helping the cause of uh, rainwater harvesting. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Goswamiji. Good afternoon, Hari and Shweta. It's good to see both of you. Um, and a good afternoon to all, all the people who will be watching us this program and who will learn from the experiences of Hari and Shweta. Um, I, I think we've been saying this again and again, but I think it bears repeating that water management is critical to lives, livelihoods, and development. And we are already seeing issues emerge in our country that, uh, that come out of poor management of water. I think we are recognizing it more and more now. When I was, uh, you know, I was a district collector or, you know, SDM, um, the, you know, we didn't talk about water management that one. It was not central to development administration. But I think it is becoming more central now because we are seeing the impact of not so good management of water. We are also, we are all, and we are seeing the impact also on public health because water management, uh, you know, has not been central to public administration. Uh, we are seeing that surface water sources are, uh, are contaminated. There's enormous pollution, lakes, rivers, water bodies. Um, we are also seeing groundwater tables dipping. In certain areas, groundwater tables also being contaminated. Uh, heavy, metal, uh, heavy metal concentrations rising because of depletion of groundwater tables. So there are multiple issues relating to water that we are grappling with today and uh, and therefore it is important that water becomes central i mean it has always been central we know how critical it is but we all we've always thought that there's plenty but now water management has to be central not just to administration but also to people's lives it has to be central to our pl planning processes in rural and urban areas, but we have to bring water consciousness back into the lives of ordinary people. For instance, for a city dweller, how much do we think about water? And here we like to say that water is largely, particularly groundwater and wastewater are largely invisible. If we use groundwater, we don't know what its quality is, where, uh, you know, what is the water table, we just use it. And when it comes to wastewater, once it goes down the drain, we don't care what becomes of it. So these, you know, it, it's also important to make these invisible things visible. Now, the Jal Shakti Abhiyan, Catch the Rain campaign, is, a, is, is trying to create a Jan Andolan. It's a call to action. This is for everybody to try and address these issues, to bring water back into the center of our consciousness. The objective of this, and you all know this, is to try and prepare for the rains. Rains are so very, very important to our country. And with climate change, we are seeing more and more variability in the water cycle. You could have extreme events. You could have 
uh, you know, longer drought periods. So it's very, very important to be able to make the most of whatever rainfall we receive. You know, it, it is one way of managing floods. It is a way of dealing with water scarcity go in, in the months where you do not have rain. So the JSA CTR is an effort in that direction. Now, I think, uh, you know, this, these dialogues that we have with our young officers in the field are so very critical in this entire effort of bringing everybody together in terms of water management. In the first place, it is very, very important because we think, and, and I've, you know, my experience is not, uh, I, I've been now attended two rounds of dialogues, and this is my third round. But what I've learned from here is, you know, what are the things that you're doing at the ground level? What innovations are happening? So what really we want to learn, and that I speak for myself and I speak for other people also, is more than just the numbers. We renovated X number of water bodies. We planted X numbers of trees. We want to learn and understand the process. How did you do it? You know, what were your challenges? How did you overcome the challenges? What did you think you didn't do so well? Because we'll also learn from the failures. So successes, failures, but most importantly, the processes, which is, you know, which is why these, these sessions are so valuable to us. The last point that I would like to say is that I'm so happy to see the both of you. And I understand one other other officer is due to job in the you know follow-up week of the international day for women i think women and water are so so you know are so intertwined women are some of the worst sufferers of poor water management but we still struggle to bring them in the center of decisions made with regard to water management we talk about, okay, there are 30% women in panchayats. There are women in village water and sanitation committees. So there is representation. Is there participation? And these are things that we need to keep talking about. And women leaders like you, hopefully, even, you know, the fact that there are three of us having this conversation today, I think we should also be able to, you know, investigate how best we can make women central to decision making processes around water. So this is something that I would also encourage you to explore. I'll stop here. And I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing from our panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Devashri Mukherjee, for sharing your thoughts and setting the context of this edition of these uh, weekly webinars, which is happening for last almost two years. Uh, uh, and in la earlier 29 editions, as the ma'am was saying, that we have seen uh, various cases of innovation at the grassroots level in various districts, at the length and breadth of the country, be it from the northeastern side or the south southern uh, side or the western side or the north side or central side. Uh, we have seen young uh, uh, district ministers and district collectors are uh, doing innovation at the ground level and as ma'am has rightly said it's also to also also important to know about not only about the data what's being being done but about the processes so that in that process we all learn how to move forward in the right direction with this on this note i'll request uh, hari chandana desai uh, district collector of narayan pet telangana to share her uh, presentation uh, hari chandana is a 2010 batch is officer and i know for sure she is a climate change enthusiast and also work tremendously in the uh, field of recycling of uh, plastic if i'm not uh, if, if, if i'm not wrong so what you heard Chandra. um thank you goswami ji and uh, thank you ma'am uh, devishri ma'am for the wonderful uh, uh, forward thoughts i uh, actually what uh, the points that you had uh, mentioned uh, uh, and uh, pointed out we have been doing in narayanpe district uh, if I can have the presentation, please, so, Sobhichi. Uh, 
Yes. Um, so thank you. Uh, we are actually focused. Uh, uh, we have focused on stepwell conservation in uh, Naranpet. When I had uh, taken over in uh, Naranpet two years ago, uh, we had a NGO which was pointing out to some dilapidated stepwells in the district. So we just decided to do an audit of uh, how many stepwells were there. Because uh, uh, um, as uh, most of you know, Telangana has uh, done uh, wonderfully in water conservation. We have done uh, two major uh, programs, which are Mission Kakatiya and Mission Bhagiratha. So under Mission Kakatiya, we were uh, focused on restoring all the ponds and uh, water structures of the village. And uh, more than 80,000 structures were uh, restored across the state uh, during that phase of uh, water, is, uh, water conservation. Also, Mission Bagiradha is uh, focused on giving uh, uh, piped water to all the households. So once uh, Mission Bagiradha now is at a stage where it has reached the the distant most hamlets of uh, uh, most backward areas of the uh, state. So once it has come up, uh, we realize that the traditional, the dependence on traditional water structures has come down. People initially used to depend on ponds or uh, boat water or groundwater level uh, structures or, or even step wells like these ones uh, that we found in Naren Pit. So they uh, were uh, slowly falling into disrepair. And uh, if we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is basically Naranpet at the uh, bottommost uh, uh, part of uh, Telangana and uh, Karnataka. And we are largely a dry uh, uh, district with uh, um, very uh, high prevalence of uh, uh, drought and water uh, uh, problems in, in initially. Now with Machine Bagirada, it has all vanished. But I still feel that uh, these structures, uh, the step wells, what we had taken up, uh, have contributed to uh, sustaining the water levels of this district. So if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so basically once we did the survey, uh, firstly, initially there were these beautiful two, three wells that uh, these NGOs found and they said we have to restore them. But we decided to take up a comprehensive water audit uh, and groundwater structures of the district. And when we did that, we found 197 historic step wells, which were more than 400, 500 years old in this district. So over a time, like I mentioned, these were all falling into disrepair. So we decided to have a unique uh, community-centric approach. We don't need these uh, structures now for water or to meet the current water needs in the people's uh, minds. We do need it for groundwater. These are important sources which are historically they were there and uh, uh, it was recognized. But we didn't want them to be covered up. And in many places, many villages, uh, many sarpanches were coming to us saying people would fall into these wells. So let us just cover it up. So it was, it was a point at that time when we decided to adopt a new strategy and integrate the community into protecting these steppers. Uh, as we know, India, we always have a, a deep cultural connect and also religious connect in many places to water and water bodies. So where there is no river or there is uh, no pond, uh, these step wells would uh, be the cultural points. So that that is the point that which we sought to revive and which we sought to uh, propagate to see that these step wells uh, continue. So if we go to the next slide. So basically, this is uh, like ma'am was saying, uh, you wanted to know the process of what we had done. So we started out with a topographical uh, field survey and a land uh, landscape uh, survey of all the water bodies in the district. And then we uh, we classified all of them. And then uh, we classified them into ponds, lakes, natural, uh, man-made. All this uh, categorization was done. And uh, we had a database for the district in the first place. So we developed a database of what are the water systems that we have. Uh, in the later slides, I will show you as to what are the water bodies we could uh, cover. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah. So, uh, sorry, the back. Uh, 
uh, the slide at the back. It's better if I had shared it, but anyway. Uh, so uh, this is what we did. We also did a physical digital visualization and the resources provided by the Jal Shakti Ministry were very helpful in this. We had done GIS mapping also uh, based on the uh, resources provided by the Jal Shakti Ministry on this. And we incorporated all of this data and then we also got in a few structural uh, arch archaeological uh, uh, help from the archaeology department, the state archaeology department, and also the uh, structural conservation architects. We, we got them on board. They're called the Rainwater Project. Um, they work primarily in Telangana. So we've got them together. And uh, we also categorized the structure because some of the wells were not structurally stable also. They were falling on themselves. So we had to restore it from the historical point. Interview. So we did all this and we also compiled the rainfall data across the district and uh, oh, then we that ha that was our beginning point. So after that we set about trying to have community dialogues. We started involving women, school children and also uh, the primarily the local leaders. So how do we develop a cultural connect with them? So what we did was, if we go to the next slide, uh, it was a simple thought, but it has been uh, yielding very good results in uh, Narayan Pet and it has been uh, taken over in other uh, parts of the state also now. Uh, we started, uh, we have, we celebrate Dashara by celebrating Bhatkama. So that's a festival uh, uh, in Telangana where uh, water is the main point. Women dance around water bodies with uh, uh, fl uh, flowers and and um, it's, it's a celebration of goddess and everything. And there are other festivals which are equally important, like Kartika, Pornami, and uh, what uh, we call um, even Sankranti, all these festivals which are local festivals, we decided to center them around water. So celebration is always a point where uh, people come together and people try to uh, own up to the resource. So once we say it's a temple or it's it's a culturally important place, people themselves started protecting it. So uh, in the first phase, we did five wins where the district administration was fully involved and we handheld uh, uh, the uh, panchayats or the municipalities and we restored those uh, five step wells first. And after we did that, and we celebrated a couple of festivals, which I'll show you in a small video uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, once we did that, the interest in people was so high that uh, today I have about 136 uh, step wells restored and some more are being uh, taken up by the villagers themselves. Apart from this, uh, the consciousness of, of water conservation has also increased. So we, it was very easy for us to take up uh, other works like uh, rooftop water harvesting. Now all our schools uh, have rooftop uh, water harvesting structures because the children themselves try to get it into schools. We were having these water dialogues in schools and trying to tell them that you should have this. So uh, that happened and then uh, a lot of farmers came forward for farm ponds and um, other the structures that we gave through NRDGS and other uh, programs. So all this was being done and overall we can see that the starting point was the wells. Obviously we have we could uh, conserve and pres uh, preserve them. Uh, but the uh, offshoot is also that people are conscious about where the water is coming from, where they have to store it and how they have to use it. Though they might not have an irrigation need or uh, a drinking water need because of the programs of the government, Overall, we need to focus on groundwater resources and how to improve them. So uh, like uh, how uh, ma'am said, uh, women are at the forefront of uh, groundwater uh, conservation. So even these festivals, the first point was where women. We involve the women, we invoke that cultural connect of women with water. And that's how we, we were able to uh, make a success out of this. And today, in fact, I'm still doing another uh, 15,000 water structures across the district under various programs. Uh, uh, different types, farm ponds, fish ponds, uh, uh, even check dams, all these things. People themselves are coming with their applications. It's not like now I have to go and ask them to do this. So if I can go to the next slide, I'll have some pictures for. So with this, uh, the results are pretty obvious. It's just been a year since this effort. So I really cannot uh, 
uh, <laughs> count how much the water level has improved. But uh, like I said, we could, uh, uh, by the groundwater department data showed us a 7% increase in the groundwater levels of the district. So three mandals, which were the first uh, preliminary mandals, which had uh, which we had taken up uh, for uh, step well revival. And also we had integrated the uh, combined strategy where NRGS was happening parallelly. So a lot of water structures, water ponds, and all these uh, were being uh, taken up. So this is how uh, we could do it. Uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide. I can show some pictures. Um, yes. Uh, so this, this is the water map of the district. This is uh, a wonderful resource provided, the GIS uh, resource provided by Jal Shakti Monastery, which we used for mapping out all the water resources of the district. And we've also made it live on our district website and on the uh, state platforms where people can see their, their water resources. They can see their uh, uh, structures. And uh, if they identify a... They can even zoom down and identify a place where they don't have enough water structures. They, they come back to us. We have these dialogues with panchayats where they can uh, try to have bigger structures within their uh, uh, villages. If we go to the next slide, I'll show you all the 197 step wells which we have mapped out. So these are the uh, step well map of the district. So these are uh, these were the uh, step wells. Some of them were in good condition. They are easily restorable uh, because, uh, like, uh, we noticed that the step wells which were attached to temples or to nearby religious structures fared better. So that is when we realized this cultural connect, and uh, we decided to capitalize on that and use them. So this was one of the better ones. So if we can go to the next slide. So this, this was the condition. There was a lot of sewer flowing into these uh, step wells and uh, uh, they were in a very pretty bad shape before we started restoring them. So these are all the before pictures. Can we move ahead? So this is another one. Please keep going. These are all pictures. So just a second. Yeah, so this is how we started to restore. And this this had involved a lot of archaeological restoration, uh, which was needed. All this part was uh, uh, supposed to, it was quite under disrepair and we had to restore it. Can we go ahead? So this is how we got the community together. Primarily all the community, all the officers, we were going down to the site and we were trying to uh, work out on them. Can we go to the next one, please? Yeah, we can move. So this is how we made them into celebration points. And now, you know, if, if somebody tries to spoil these wells, also people come and they start saying, uh, you know, this is this place is uh, important for us. It is uh, uh, it, 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 you should not spoil it. So that's how we even bought about this awareness not to throw plastic, not to throw um, uh, all and let your sewer systems into these water bodies. Can we go to the next one? So this is Batkama. This is how we celebrated it. So please go to the next one. Yeah, we also bought about the cultural connect with uh, having events in these places. Can we move? If you can play the video, please. Uh, I think with that, I'll close my presentation. So that is uh, what we did. And thank you.
so thank you all uh, that was uh, the first step well which we restored and because of that uh, the imagery that we could show a lot of other villages came forward and subsequently it has been going on in a much more uh, easier phase for us thank you for uh, providing me this opportunity thank you so much thank you so much uh, harichand and desai for uh, for an interesting and insightful presentation and i must say a colorful presentation but that also uh, capture the mood and the way uh, you have restored the water bodies uh, in your district as uh, devashri ma'am was saying at the very beginning that uh, live livelihood and engagement of women especially for the water conservation it is so important and this harichandra desai's presentation actually shows why it is important to uh, to to take women participation and community participation to make the water converse, conservation a success thank you so much harichandra desai uh, with this uh, we move to other part of the southern india from the state of telangana to the state of kerala god's own country we have a young is officer with us shweta nagar koti assistant collector of trivandrapuram we welcome shweta ji thank you so much for joining us today over to you for your presentation uh good afternoon to all the seniors and uh, everybody else who can hear me i'm shweta nagar kruti ias 2020 batch currently posted as the assistant collector of tiruvananthapuram uh tiruvananthapuram has a uh, one oh, before starting my ppt i would like to take the permission to share the screen if i could if i may Is it visible? Yeah, we can yes, see. Yes, okay, it is. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, but we so, can see your Google, uh, Google on the home page. We cannot see the presentation yet. Okay. Okay. is it visible now uh just wait it's i think yeah i think it's coming yeah yeah now you just put it on full screen mode yeah it's there okay okay uh so tiruvananthapuram has won the uh, award of the best district for its water sector initiative in the southern zone very recently and it had been a big uh, motivator for all the people who have worked really hard in uh, doing all these initiatives uh tiruvananthapuram being the second most populated district of the state has been facing the problems related to the pollution in the water bodies and the depletion of the groundwater level so after which we've started to take these initiatives which i'll be uh, talking about in the next slides so before starting i would like to give a brief uh, overview of tiruvananthapuram district we as i said are the second most populated district with 3.3 million uh, population i think which has now been increased to 4 million uh, the density is quite high especially in the corporation area and we have four municipalities and 73 panchayats the major source of water uh, for the district is the rainfall and we receive about 1827 mm of total annual rainfall we have uh, three dams namely neyar pepara and arubikkara pepara and arubikkara are comparatively smaller dams and um, they are mainly used for supplying the water in the district while neyar is used for the irrigation purpose uh, the major sources of water are from the river that are neyar karmana and vamanapuram river and it being god's own uh, country we have uh, some tourist spots also like ponmudi veli akulam And this is the map of uh, Tiruvananthapuram. We are the southernmost district, and uh, we have six taluks: Varkala, Chirangi, Tiruvananthapuram, Neyatinkara, Kattakada, and Nirumangal. So Kattakada was uh, the block which had been uh, inspiration for the other blocks also, other taluks also. It started with its initiative called Jal Samruddhi some years back, uh, which worked upon the water conservation initiatives. And through that, I think the, all the other districts, uh, all the other taluks got. Uh, inspired and we started the entire process of water conservation these are the initiatives that has been taken by trivandrum district which made us i think win the award in the southern zone i will be talking about each one of these pointers uh, in the next slides so we'll start with protection and conservation of water resources 
uh, there are some pictures which are shown where the Manurega workers are laying down the geotextile membranes to preserve the banks of the river and the stream. I will be talking uh, about the entire geotextile membrane laying in the coming uh, slide. Uh, and as I spoke initially that the problem of pollution is there in the district. So it becomes very important to check the uh, quality of the river water. So we have been monitoring the quality of the river water uh, so as to check whether it is fit for the aquatic ecosystem as well as for the general public. Uh, the desilting, regular desilting is also undertaken uh, to maintain the flow of the river and uh, keep up with the hydraulic pressure of the river. Simultaneously, we are also developing uh, the tributaries. So basically what we are doing is we are constructing an infrastructure around the river which can connect the river with the artificial pits and uh, we will fill the water in those artificial pits which can then be transferred to the wells and uh, the pipelines which were uh, and bringing the water near to the doorstep of the public until now with the help of manrega we have uh, protected 52,700 meters of banks of river brooks and streams and uh, through about uh, 2073 initiative uh, we have uh, renewed 1,481 kilometers of streams and brooks. We've also reno renovated our traditional water bodies. And currently, we are undergoing 4,745 projects uh, with the, in the category of water conservation and water harvesting works. We have also uh, constructed 549 farm ponds. I will be talking in details about the farm ponds in the next slide. Preserving groundwater reserve. Apart from pollution, groundwater, depletion of groundwater was also one of the problems that Trivandrum was facing. And uh, we worked towards improving that uh, issue. And uh, we did it through soil and water conservation activities. And currently, until now, we have made 26,609 rain, uh, rainwater recharge pits. And soil uh, conservation by planting more trees. Uh, for example, in this, we have mentioned about 22,500 coconut trees that we've planted. So uh, the basin of the coconut tree works as a water harvesting pit. So whenever rain falls, the pit gets filled with the water and it percolates the water and recharges the groundwater. And uh, through that process, every year, every uh, during every rainfall, we are able to percolate about 1 crore, 12 lakh, 50,000 liters of water. And this uh, planting of trees was done under Haritha Kerala Mission Initiative. Another Haritha Kerala Mission Initiative in which we have developed 83 hectares of grassland, which helped in slowing down the rainwater runoff, which not only prevented the soil erosion, but also uh, recharged the groundwater. We have also constructed farm ponds. So farm pond is basically a land in the uh, agricultural farms where uh, the either it could be in the public farmlands or by the private land owner also that they could decide that this particular part of their uh, farm they want to uh, preserve water in this particular land so the rainwater will be collected and then that can be used for the irrigation purposes uh, we have also created artificial recharge structure and maintaining the existing recharge system in the picture, you can see that uh, there is a water flowing recharge pit. So this recharge pit has been artificially created. Uh, in Trivandrum, we have certain quarries. So these quarries become hollow because the stone, we take out the stone for the construction material. And then uh, there is a hollow uh, shape that, which, is, which remains in which the rainwater gets filled. And if that rainwater becomes unutilized and we are not using it, then it becomes a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So it is very important that we are using this water. So you, as you can see in the picture of the abandoned quarry near Tinkara Talu, you will see some pipes. So through these pipes, we are connecting the abandoned quarry with the artificial pits and we are transferring the water from the quarry to the pits. And in, when this water is collected in the pits, then this water is then sent to the wells in the pipelines. And uh, we also filter this water through a process called uh, as it is mentioned, open well sand filters over here. So basically, we lay down a thick layer of sand, which acts as a sea. So whenever the water is go, uh, going before before entering under the into the inside the ground, uh, it gets filtered. So the groundwater that is getting recharged is the filtered groundwater. And in the wells also, so around the well, we will put up this layer of sand 
and if at all like the rain water or even these recharge pits so whenever we are sending the water from the recharge pit it will first enter into that sand it will get filtered and then will enter into inside the ground the next is the micro irrigation uh, processes uh, so irrigation through drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation is also being um, promoted in the in the city area especially so we are starting from horticulture and floriculture where, where we are using the drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation methods uh, also in the public building compounds in the raj bhavan and all the official residences we are irrigating the crops through the micro irrigation and drip irrigation process whatever fresh vegetables uh, i mean there are some village offices here in trivandrum where the village officers have you know uh, sowed some uh, vegetables they're growing their own vegetables and they're irrigating it through the drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation methods these fresh vegetables are then consumed either by the staff and they even sell it outside for, to the general public uh, to the farmers we are uh, in the uh, process of spreading the awareness so that they also uh take up the irrigation methods like drip and sprinkler irrigations rooftop rainwater harvesting it is one of the very common phenomenon here in trivandrum especially in the public buildings and in the schools uh currently we have 358 rainwater harvesting structures which has the capacity to store 10000 liter of water this water is then transferred uh, to the recharging wells and from there the water can be used by the community for their domestic purposes pollution as i said is one of the major problem uh, for trivandrum so we are focusing upon recycling and reusing the waste water and for that we have uh, in, uh, installed some uh, solid treatment uh, plants sewage treatment plants so we have one sewage treatment plant in muttathara which is uh, recycling approximately 110 million liter water per day and then this water the grey water is being sent back and can be used except for the drinking water purpose the water can be reused uh, the we are still undergoing uh, impl uh, this installation of other sewage treatment plants in the across the district and all the sewage treatment plant will be working for the recycling of the water there is another picture of an mbbr which is placed in the medical college hospital of trivandrum mbbr stand for move, moving bed uh, bioreactor so this bioreactor is similar to the uh, the sewage treatment plant only it's smaller might be a little expensive but uh, it uh, does the same thing so all the waste water which is there in the medical college will be treated in this mbbr and uh, through the method of uh, Uh, aerobic sludge treatment where the pollutant will be converted into the simpler compounds of carbon dioxide water and the ammonia will be converted into um, uh, nitrates and nit uh, nitrites i have also put up a picture of a bandicoot robot so we want to make trivandrum uh, manual scavenging free so we have started uh, cleaning the manholes with the help of the robots i just wanted to show this and i placed this in the slide planting trees the maintenance of mechanism and survival of trees so harita kerala mission uh, was inaugurated in 2016 by our uh, honorable chief minister and the aim of the harita kerala mission is to make kerala clean and green uh, and under this mission we use the uh, we does like afforestation and uh, we promote organic farming we are also working toward conservation of water and under this program we have planted about 21231 trees in 38 acres of land uh, also roadside tree plantation of about 45000 trees and we will be maintaining and protecting these trees for 3 years that is ensured in the scheme capacity building in water conservation and management so uh, as i said that in katakada the project jal samruddhi started uh, which uh, inspired all the other taluks so this geo textile protection was started in the jal samruddhi project only rather than uh, putting up the concrete structure we are put putting the geo textile this geo textile is made up of coir so uh, we are putting it uh, laying it over the banks of the river channels and streams and we will be planting grasses over it so it will make these beds more robust and it is a, uh, the more eco friendly way of conserving the Uh, water bodies 
also we are uh, continuously spreading the awareness among the community and the different stakeholders there has been water audit which was conducted 6 months back uh, in all the public buildings and it was found out that 20 to 30% of the water is being wasted so after um, becoming cognizant of the fact uh, the we have started the initiative of uh, conserving water in the public buildings also there were certain recommendations which were given during that water auditing time is that we need to recycle the water use the dry toilets and collect the rain water for gardening uh, purposes this is the current status uh, of the pipe drinking water facility under the jal jeevan mission uh, in trivandrum we have total number of 686000 households and in, in april 2020 the coverage was only 24% which has now been increased to 40% so the uh, the uh, goal is to complete the entire uh, by uh, the provide provision of the pipe drinking water to all the household uh, by 2023 to 24 at the end i would uh, like to mention once again that we have won this award at the same time there was a district awards uh, that uh, were uh, given for the very first time in the in the state and trivandrum got some around 12 awards and uh, one of the award was given to our district collector as the best district collector with this i would like to end my presentation thank you very much Thank you so much, uh, Shweta Nagar Koti, uh, Assistant Collector of Trivandrum, for sharing with us uh, different in various initiatives being undertaken in your district, especially for water conservation, water management, rainwater harvesting, uh, and different modes and uh, method being used uh, by your uh, officials, especially uh, quality of river water monitoring, protecting the river beds, and using robot for uh, to get rid of manual scavenging, and also you have given a. data of what kind of work being done on the jal jeevan mission for pipe drinking motor thank you so much we are also joined by somya pande uh, is officer chief development officer of kanpur they are uh, from uttar pradesh we welcome somya pande ji thank you so much for joining us today so from the southern part of the country let's move up to the northern part of the country the state of uttar pradesh over to you somya pande for your presentation a uh, very good evening to debashri ma'am ma'am uh, it's a privilege to be able to share uh, my thoughts with you and to hear my fellow speakers before me my seniors my colleagues uh, i'm sorry ma'am for joining a little late uh, we just uh, concluded the elections in up and there were some counting form formalities and papers that i think some connectivity issue may be somya if you are having connectivity issues i think turn off your video yes. then i think you will be able to hear you uh, ma 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 you are audible yeah, I, yeah but if you keep having connectivity issues then maybe just turn off your video right ma'am i'll do that there can be issues now here uh, but to today some uh, uh, line has been uh, damaged so that's why it's coming and going i'll share my presentation if uh, mr goswami can confirm uh, if it is uh, visible uh, uh you please play it ma'am we'll just yeah, yeah i'm you. just playing one second yeah. yeah it's there is there on screen okay yeah yeah uh it came it gone ma'am can we again play it yeah is it is it visible now no it was it was but uh, then it gone okay because it's showing that sharing is on but go swami ji Yes, it's possible that uh, because she has connectivity issues, she'll have problem sharing the um, screen also. Yes. So Is yes. Is it possible? You, can you share it? Yes. Do you yes. have it? I think we have it. Yes. I think now we can see the presentation, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Ye
right okay okay okay, okay. please go ahead somewhere yeah right right uh, ma'am uh, so uh, i am currently i am 2017 batch officer ma'am i'm currently posted as chief development officer in kanpur dehar uh, so this is a district profile this is the map of up and uh, so kanpur dehar is a district which lies in the central part of up and we have a population of about 20 lakhs or so now uh, the uh, in terms of rainfall and climate we have a sub humid type of a climate and uh, 90% of our rainfall takes place during the monsoon season that is from june to september so all the works of catch the rain and all the works for water conservation uh, all the planning for water conservation uh, we did in the months of march april uh, may june so that from july when the monsoon comes we are able to catch every drop of rain where it falls and when it falls as the tagline goes uh uh since kanpur dehat uh, lies in the ganga yamuna doab region uh, so the soil is fertile and uh, the basic uh, so ma'am basically the district in which i am sitting is primarily an agricultural district we have 618 gram panchayats and about 1022 villages so there is very very little town area or district area in terms of city area and so the soil that is older so um, uh, that leads to a lot of uh, sometimes fertility issues and uh, sometimes uh, growing of uh, rich crops is, is not um, that easy air for the farmers ma'am this uh, so we have uh, 10 blocks in kanpur dehar and uh, this i try, i gathered this data from the underground water department here uh the in which it is shown the pre monsoon and the post monsoon over the past few years has been shown so this data when i analyze this data for the first time i um, we we made this table and we we actually i'll show you this map ma'am in which uh, we analyzed which are the semi critical blocks so uh, uh, the whole like we know ma'am in underground water terminology either it is exploited over exploited critical semi critical or normal uh, or safe so in our district the four blocks that are shown in yellow color are semi critical blocks in which the exploitation rate of underground water is more than 75% so when catch the rain abhiyan came and when uh, we started thinking about water conservation as a in a mission mode we uh, thought to uh, we had we had made a plan to phase it out focusing first on the semi critical blocks and then spreading it out to the other blocks so most of our uh, initiatives that we took under catch the rain were majorly focused in these four blocks which were our semi critical blocks and uh, in a general way focused over all over the district so this was the analysis that the four semi critical blocks uh, the catch the rain abhiyan and national water which mission were much needed and we tried to make it a people's movement all the or the jan uh, sahabhagita so we tried to converge the various water related schemes that are going on under different departments under the umbrella of national water mission and uh, we tried to involve the villagers uh, as much as possible on the right side ma'am i have shown the strategy that we used so number one and the most important was social asset creation that was primarily fueled by narega so under narega uh, uh, construction of assets uh, mine, uh, uh, like ponds and like uh, check dams etc which were permissible under narega uh, that gave us twin benefits number one was employment to local villagers or the generation of mandates and number two was social asset creation and of course uh, multiplying into water conservation uh there are many other departments in up ma'am which look after water so we tried to uh, uh, i personally called a meeting of all the departments which are looking after water in one way or the other and we try to find we try to uh, find out what all convergence is possible among all those departments uh i'll just show in the next slide what all, which were the departments that we converged uh coming on to the next point was uh, after narega we uh, went for rain harvesting rain water harvesting was not only rooftop uh, but but also surface storage sub surface storage and a combination of surface and sub surface uh, and then third and the most important was intensive triggering just like in the swachh bharat mission we had uh, we had witnessed uh, behavioral change in the mindset of people to go for odf similarly we took ctr in terms of behavioral change in intensive triggering and thus focused on ic Uh, involving the local villagers 
uh, I will start uh, with this. I'll come to this later, ma'am. I'll first want to show the departments that are there in UP. So when I joined uh, at the post of CDO last year, I was very confused on what all departments, because there are multiple departments dealing with water, underground water, ground water, etc. So I tried to chalk down what all the depart, what are all the departments that look after, and I tried to make a summary. So there's this Lagu Sichai or minor irrigation, which looks after check dam construction and talabon ka jinodhar or rejuvenation of ponds. Uh, so this was one major department that we focused. Second was Jal Nigam. Jal Nigam focuses on Jal Jeevan mission, uh, Har Ghar Nal or water in every house. The Gram Vikas or the Rural Development Department, this majorly deals with Narega or uh, rejuvenation of the uh, uh, ponds. One Vibhag or Forest Department is concerned with afforestation, which directly and indirectly is linked with underground water rejuvenation. Then the Krishi Vibhag or Agricultural Department also runs a lot of scheme uh, about check dam construction, Khet Tala, Yojana, Jal Sanchen, on farm harvesting. The next was Parti Bhumi Vikas Vibhag, which also looks after Jal Sanchen. The Sichai Vibhag, the Irrigation uh, Department, that also looks about Talabon Ka Jinodar. Avas and Shehri Niyojan, the Urban Development Department, was also running schemes on uh, rooftop rainwater harvesting. And lastly, the Horticultural Department, looking after the drip and sprinkler irrigation. So these were the broad departments that I could chalk out, uh, ma'am, in which I tried to analyze that how we could get better benefits by converging the efforts of all departments in the four semi-critical blocks that we have. So I will start with Man uh, Manrega. Like I said, ma'am, we focused on productive employment, asset creation, women empowerment. We particularly focused on the fact that most of the labor uh, goes to the women uh, because women are the ones who are at the most disadvantaged positions, though they are the ones who have to walk long distances still to uh, collect water and uh, from wells, from hand pumps. And therefore, they are the ones that we should target uh, as our most important beneficiaries. And of course, water conservation. So ma'am, just to give uh, uh, in terms of figures, uh, we created about 2 lakh mandates and uh, in the category of water conservation and rainwater harvesting, so this is the CIB board or the Citizen Information Board, we focused on creation of as many talabs as possible in the villages. Uh, then there was rejuvenation of traditional and other water bodies. So we tried to fi find out areas where there were traditional wells, where there were traditional step tanks and we uh, took meetings of Gram Sabhas, took ideas from then, them only uh, and then we try to focus on the rejuvenation of traditional water bodies. Reuse and recharge structures. We took it as an abhyam that every uh, hand pump will have a soap pit so that no drop of water is wasted. So in this way, we converged it with the Panchayati Raj. So in Panchayati Raj, there was a Swachata abhyam, Swachata Sarvekshan going on. In that also, we had to make soap pits, recharge pits, NEDEP pits, NEDEP compost pits. So we converged it with the Panchayati Raj and we almost saturated our hand pumps and our villages with uh, soap pits and NEDEP, pits, uh, NEDEP compost pits. Watershed development. These are the, these these are some of the examples of soap pits that we made, and uh, wherever watershed structures were there, we tried to develop. And in each of them, we created over one lakh mandates, and still the work is going on. We've achieved ninety eight percent of our mandates only through water conservation works in the last financial year, ma'am. Intensive afforestation. So there was uh, under the uh, uh, Honorable uh, Chief Minister of UP, there was this abhyan of uh, five crore plantations and uh, by the forest department. So we converged it with the Narega. We use our Narega laborers. We use our Narega women laborers. We used our Narega women Mahila mates to uh, go for intensive afforestation. And we focused more on the survival rate of the trees. So what was happening, a lot of trees were being planted, but they didn't survive because of lack of care. So this time we took help of uh, tree guards. We took help of fencing so that they're not damaged by uh, stray animals. They're not damaged by uh, natural calamities. So we tried to focus more on the survival. We also started one initiative, one child, one tree initiative, in which we tried we tried uh, to give children of that village ownership of the tree. So we put small boards of names of the children uh, nearby the tree, so that they have an ownership every day when they go to school. They pass through the trees, they water they water the trees, and they take care of the trees. So uh, we try to inculcate that also for the survival factor. 
uh, so talab and ponds ma'am so what we found when we look at the uh, looked at the khatoni or the land records of our villages that there were lot about 70% of our area which was registered as ponds on land records was actually encroached and now there was construction on that so we'll soon reach a time where we'll say that once upon a time there were ponds so in this we uh, carried out a massive iec and we carried out massive de encroachment activities with the help of re uh, revenue department so here there was convergence of revenue department and gram panchayat and also swachh bharat mission in which we were focusing on construction of wsp or waste stabilization ponds so three departments we converged and we tried to remove the encroachment in time uh, we tried to regain its structure to its original pond like structure uh, i'll just show some examples of before and after pictures these are our villages uh, for example this is one villages josar veer singpur in vikas khand or block sarvan khera so before there was this uh, plain land and then we converted into a, it's or so it was it was registered as talab in the revenue records but on uh, the on on ground there was this uh, agricultural this thing going on so we uh, restored it to its original structure again this is gram panchayat lakshmanpur pilak these are some of the pictures in which we restored the land which was uh, erstwhile talab into its original structure so that in monsoon it is filled with water and can be used for various purposes again this was a huge claim uh, this was this is gram panchayat kishanpur in which this structure was lying a very unattended with the help of uh, villagers and with the help of uh, jan sayo we converted to it uh, into a beautiful pond we will further work upon it with the help of csr and narega for rejuvenation beautification of this pond again ma'am these are all the real uh, uh, time examples of uh, before and after pictures of uh, our villages in which we converted it into ponds uh ma'am uh, talking about the historical structures in kanpur dehar we have a very big structure called the bhogi sagar talab with a with with an area of 8.2 hectares and a capacity of almost 136000 uh, meter cube per year so it has a capacity of 2.76 hectare meter of recharge of rain water this structure as of now it is lying barren so uh, we've taken up a project with the help of csr uh, in which ma'am we are trying to develop it as a tourist spot as a bhogi sagar tourist spot and we uh, we are using narega labors which will provide employment it will also boost our local economy of course it will lead to tourism irrigation and water conservation in the nearby area the whole project costs about 2 crore 50 lakhs because ma'am we don't have any particular uh this thing sanctioned for this project uh, we've all we've requested the tourism department also to sanction some funds but as of now we've started work with the help of corporate social responsibility that is csr with the help of local factories here uh the minor irrigation department uh, we we've constructed check dams ma'am so the gori bagpur check dam in metha the derapur check dam uh so these are check dams that that has been constructed with the help of minor irrigation department uh rooftop rain water harvesting is a is an old age old concept ma'am but it was uh, hugely neglected here because it was not uh, uh, focused on um, in a mission mode in this district so ma'am what we we made a plan to cover first of all all the government buildings all the tehsils all the blocks all the police thanas the government schools anganwadis the pradhan mantri awas and the mukhya mantri awas that we give to the labharthis so for that we uh try to use the gram panchayat funds and we try to make it mandatory that any structure that is constructed using government funds has to mandatorily have a rooftop rainwater harvesting structure on it and we've also asked for funds but till the time we are getting funds we we are using the local uh, gram panchayat uh, funds for constructing the rooftop rainwater harvesting structure apart from this ma'am we've also made a, a sort of a policy that uh, we have big factories here in kanpur dehat of amul of nerolac paints and many others of leather industries of edible uh, food industries of packaging industries so whenever they are given an noc of uh, uh, using the uh, re, uh, underground water we've mandatorily made it a point that they will also develop a pond a uh, developer rain a uh, uh, storage pit for conserving rain water so ma'am that was what i wanted to show in the beginning uh, i'll just show some photos of the structures that are being built by the 
private companies here so ma'am this is by amul amul uh, factory has constructed this recharge underground water in lieu of the noc that uh, it, it has got for using the underground water again this is by the nerolac company ma'am uh, we we made uh, they've made an artificial recharge uh, uh, structure uh, for uh, recharging the water so there some examples uh, there's also one by the uh, kanpur edibles they've made an uh, rainwater harvesting structure underground rain, uh, under the ground water act so this was one thing that we uh, tried to involve the private sector also to help in our efforts of catch the rain uh, in rooftop rainwater harvesting like i was mentioning ma'am this is our fire uh, station office this is our uh, lagu sichai office again these are the government buildings in which we mandatorily made the rooftop rainwater harvesting uh, uh, mandatory the uh, last point was jan uh, sahbagita which is the most pivotal point for any uh, movement to succeed so we carried out intensive ic with the help of nehru yuva kendra the ncc nss school uh, colleges children the yuvak mangal dal and the ngos uh, so this uh, the regular uh, launching events pamphlet distributions poster distribution gram sabha oath taking quiz competitions nukkar nataks and this has led to a lot of tangible outcomes because when we now go to the gram panchayats there is an awareness i can see a perceptible change in 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 people's thinking uh, that yes water is important and every drop of water can be and should be conserved for our future generations these are uh, the activities of iic ma'am that have been carried out uh, in kanpur dehat a, a lot of paintings have been done in all the gram panchayats in which the importance of jal sanrakshan has been highlighted uh to the people uh posters banners knowledge competitions and of course the media coverage ma'am uh csr uh, like i've already shown and mentioned ma'am we've also used csr we've also tried to one point was also uh, pollution of the ponds so uh, uh we have a uh, we have few ponds in kanpur dehat which are full of cyanobacterial bloom or the blue green algae which is damaging the uh, the aquatic life of ponds and also the nearby areas so we are using csr and social banking uh for cleaning these ponds uh and using people's uh, efforts also like every sunday we use this uh, Uh, that every one has to come out of their houses and help in cleaning the ponds so we are trying to create a people's movement for this also the jal jeevan mission in jal jeevan mission uh, the district project reports of each of the villages for water tanks has been prepared uh, the gram panchayats have to be saturated with water tanks and null uh, so in that also we are carrying out intensive ic activities so that uh, people realize the importance of water they pay their water tax also to the gram panchayats and hence they conserve water at the same time this is the convergence that we've used as a model for making the ctr uh, uh, give us tangible results and th these are the departments uh, that uh, we converge some of the challenges uh, which i faced on the ground level ma'am and which i would like to share and get uh, get guidance from you on the same one was funds so sometimes what happens ma'am that gram panchayats have their own plans and we don't get funds for uh, rooftop rain water harvesting so it's difficult to carve out funds sometime for uh, uh, some of the ideas for example rooftop rain water harvesting or um, uh, some other projects that we plan for example the bhogi sagar talab uh, uh, beautification and rejuvenation secondly ma'am there is uh, there, there, i feel there is uh, there, there isn't a dedicated body for planning and convergence at the district level so everything is going more in a half hazard mode at the district level so if there is some so there is this uh, uh, monthly uh, review that happens but we don't have any specific targets or achievable tangible outcomes on which we can ass uh, uh, assess our performance Uh, uh then third is iec outcome monitoring becomes difficult because we carry a lot of a lot of iec but again we don't have any uh, measure or a tangible uh, uh, standard to measure uh, how iec is actually impacting on ground fourth is sustainability ma'am how to make it a sustainable movement that even and not an officer centric movement that even if one officer goes and the other comes water conservation becomes and remains a priority at the district level uh another is a ppp model we don't have a defined ppp model the private sector also we we have to pursue uh, a lot of times with the private sector to come and rope in so there's there's not well defined or mandatory provisions for the private sector to help us in water conservation uh and for young officers like myself and others ma'am if there could be more exposure visits to places which are doing good in water convergence like rajasthan like south india so maybe up can also uh, emulate uh, models uh, according to its own uh, specific uh, situations and copy it here 
uh, one and the last point was ma'am there is a bhumi sanrakshan vibhag in up which is lying defunct for a, a long period of time so bhumi sanrakshan vibhag was one vibhag which was which used to focus on soil conservation soil rejuvenation but nowadays uh, it is it isn't getting funds and therefore it is lying defunct here in up so these were some of the field level challenges i felt ma'am that i should share with you uh, and uh, this was a, the jjm ma'am i'll not go into the details of jjm because uh, jal jeevan mission has already been discussed in detail i would uh, end my presentation ma'am with one line of rahim rahiman pani rakhiye bin pani sab soon pani gaye na ubre moti manush chun we all understand the importance of water we all understand uh, why we should conserve it for a future generations but i think it has to be embedded in the minds of people Uh, more uh, specifically, so that it becomes a people's movement in true sense. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, uh, Swamiya Pandey, Chief Development Officer of Kanpur, Dehat, Uttar Pradesh. And if I take a crux of what your presentation, I think it's more more than hundred slides. It was like how we have successfully made Kashmir in campaign and the water conversation, conservation, a uh, people's movement by bringing behavioral change uh, with women empowerment. Which resulted in water conservation. Thank you so much, Swami Pandey. Now I hand over the session to Devushri Mukherjee for her uh, closing remarks and her guidance to all of us. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So Hari, Shweta, Swamiya, all three of you give me a lot of hope. Um, Hari, from your presentation, what I found fascinating was the way the you know um, the heritage structures. Where actually you mobilize people around heritage structures to then sort of establish the centrality of water, and that's very fascinating because you know traditionally people have conserved sacred groves, communities have come around you know the, to uh, to protect those resources. So if we can trigger those things, I think that's a very very good process. um uh, just a quick question i mean i we try to keep these sessions as interactive as we can i didn't want to ask you guys questions while you were presenting but i just a quick question so um so most of these uh, these uh, sources were polluted and you cleaned it up over a period of time how did you do that beyond just stopping the um, you know uh, uh, the uh, sewage flowing into those structures did you manage to sort of revive catchments or ensure that the uh, um, uh, how did you how did you ensure that the uh, that the water was cleaner ma'am actually most of these structures are uh, groundwater they are very deep wells uh, that's what we found and also uh, most of them are rainwater uh, preserving structures so some of them were completely dried up the ones i had shown uh, were filled up with plastic and sewage so what we did was we diverted the sewage lines into uh, compost pits or uh, these big uh, soak pits kind of uh, structures that our villages had in fact most of our villages have uh, uh, soak pits in each of the uh, Uh, households so we don't have sewage now coming into these structures so that's what we tried to link it with manrega where each household had a soak pit wherever there was no soak pit in the household we tried to create a community soak pit uh, at a common juncture so that the entire village was not uh, uh, discharging any waste water as such so this is the first step and uh, what we did was we also identified any wrong inlet points into these uh, step wells and we cover we stopped them and uh, I, and in fact uh, we we tried to recharge them with uh, the last rains in fact did the job for us this is actually catching the rain uh, uh, in all these structures so once we cleaned up all the debris and the silt from these uh, structures the rain water filled it up and uh, they are maintaining the stable levels because of that uh, so that is uh, primarily what we have done fascinating thank you uh, shweta again uh, excellent and obviously tiruvananthapuram is is one of the foremost districts in terms of water management but you know the the sheer volume of work that you people have done now my question is did you create a district which is something that we have been requesting all districts to do have you uh, ha, have you created a district water recharge and conservation plan and are all these activities are a part of this plan is that how you're doing it 
uh, ma'am we have uh, created that yes and also because uh, kerala has this uh, very uh, beautifully like we have decentralized all the responsibilities to so panchayats and municipalities they have also sent their staffs and we all are working together in uh, regarding all these okay. things okay we'll follow this up some more uh, soumya yes. again i you know what i the one of the most interesting things and something that that really resonated with me that uh, this thing about mapping the departments that work on water because we were talking to a lot of state governments on water use efficiency and we were trying to bring out the best practices you know what have states done so that we could learn and share those practices now depending on which the um, coordinating department was so if water resources is coordinating then they won't and let's say the state of orissa orissa has done excellent work on water use efficiency in terms of in urban water supply but because water resources department is leading it they will not talk about what uh, you know um, uh, urban water supply department has done so i'm glad that this leadership is happening at the district level and that is the idea you know let's converge you know like the elephant the various aspects of water use is important but also the other things that i've noted from what you said are the you know really you you have um, you know given me work uh so in terms of a framework to assess the progress of efforts effectiveness of i iec ppp network exposure visits and the bhumi sangrakshan all these points are very relevant points i think we will have a separate conversation and at the national water mission we will do some homework and try and see how we can help better to address these issues in terms of the bhumi sangrakshan vibhag the department of land resources has just got their pm ksy um, you know cabinet approval so i think now the bhumi sangrakshan vibhag can start sending projects to government of india so they will have more work and more resources now but right. i will come back to you on a one on one basis because the points that you have made are very very important and we will try and see how you know we can we can frame some things that we can share across district thank you ma'am thanks but thank you very much it's been uh, i mean i have learned from all of you so thanks all three of you thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much uh, devoshi mukherji ma'am and the district collectors district administrators administrators from the state of telangana uh, kerala and uttar pradesh and as uh, somia pandey was giving her presentation in her last slide she mentioned about that if we can have some exposure visit so that we can share the best practices and when we env envisage this uh, webinar series uh, almost one and a half years back and also devoshi madam once she was here uh, we said that the aim of this uh, webinar series is to share the best practices of the various districts so that knowledge sharing can happen and accordingly future steps can be taken uh, keeping in mind those realities and those uh, best practices thank you so much all of you do join us for the 31st edition uh, next to next saturday uh, of this weekly webinar series and before we end as they were see mukherjee has said in the beginning that uh, we have just completed or celebrated the uh, international women's day and uh, women and water is so important so let's end in on this note where we say that uh, everybody says women are like water i think it's because water is the source of life and it adapts itself to its environment like women water also gives of itself wherever it goes to nurture life so let's all of us do our bit to save water and to make a better future thank you so much take care goodbye do join us for the 31st edition of weekly webinar series on casering campaign Thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am